Welcome back to my shop. My name's Guy. This is the last episode I'm doing of building this, which is a round table. Yes, it's finally done. Uh, previously, I've turned the legs. I've made the round skirt. I've made the top. The top is pretty cool. It's a, a cherry crotch veneer in a sunburst pattern. There's a curly maple edge border. There's an inlay between the field and the border, and also a hardwood edge. Now, if you've missed any of those episodes, I'll leave a link in the corner for you to go take a look at those later. This time, I'm going to take care of those little details that need to be done before I did the final assembly on the piece. I'm going to attach this cherry bead molding to the bottom of the apron. I'm going to cut slots on the inside of the rail so I can use buttons to attach the top. I'm going to do all the surface prep, and then I'm going to put on a nice shellac and wax finish. So let's get to it. Well, I'm going to start the glue up, and the first thing I need to do is apply these beads to the bottom of the, the skirt. I don't want to try to fit these and bend them at the same time. So I'm going to cut them. I cut them a little bit long. So I've got more than enough there. And I'm going to glue them in place. Then I'm going to let them sit for a day before I actually cut them to that angle right there. So I've got some hide glue. I've got a bunch of clamps. And I'm just going to start gluing this up. I've got the first two on there. My major concern is that it's flush all the way to the edges here. And that when I turn it over, there's no visible gap running around here at all. So that one looks good. And I'm just going to glue up the other one. And then I said I'm going to let these sit for at least overnight. I'm over here at the router table and I've got a quarter inch slot cutting bit set up. Uh, the height of it, the top of the cutter is about the same height as this piece of maple stock. This is what I'm going to be using to make the buttons of to attach the tabletop. So I've marked out some starting points and stopping points on the top of the rail. Very important to do this on the top of the rail. I almost did it on the bottom of the rail. I put the, the, the marks on the wrong side, I had to erase them and do it over again. And I'm just going to start hogging out that material in there. So I took that piece of maple and I cut a 3 8 by 3 8 inch rabbit inside of it. And I made a little tick mark over here. It's about 1 inch, give or take. And I'm just going to use that as a stopping point. I'm just going to cut off four of these. I'm over here at the drill press table and I've got uh, one of the buttons and I'm going to be using number eight inch and a quarter screws. I've got a 3 32nd inch drill bit in my drill press. I just need to put a through hole in here. While the parts are complete for the table itself, the tabletop is done, sanded, and first coat of oil on it already. So I need to start doing the surface prep for the aprons and the legs. I'm going to use a sanding block and some loose pieces of sandpaper. I'm going to start at 150, 180, 220. I might go up to 320. I'm not quite sure yet. But this is going to take some time, and it's pretty boring, so I'm not going to videotape it. But I just wanted to give you an idea of what I'm doing here. So I've got all the surface prep done. I'm going to start the glue up. The first thing I'm going to do is be putting dominoes into the legs. And I'm just going to let those sit for probably a half hour to an hour. And then I'll move on to the next step from there. I'm also going to take a few minutes and clean up any and all of the glue squeeze out. There might be around these tenons. I don't want any glue to affect the fit when I finally put these together. I've given the dominoes and the legs some time to dry. I'm going to get some glue in these mortises here in the skirt. Now that I've got glue on all the surfaces and in the mortises, just need to get these together. All right, well, it took about 10 minutes to get all these joints closed, but they're nice and tight. The table's nice and flat. I knew this was going to be a pain in the butt 
to glue up. I'm glad I used a high glue. It doesn't expand those dominoes that much, so I was finally able to get it all closed up. I'm going to let this sit overnight, and then tomorrow I will get the uh, other legs on the, the bridle joints. Well, it's the next morning I took the band clamp off, and everything is really nice and solid, so I'm going to put the other two legs on. I'm just going to put some glue on these bridle joints and then pound the other legs in. Well, after I've got both legs in and clamped in place, I'm just going to let this dry for a couple hours. Well, the legs are out of the clamps, and I've gone over the piece one more time just to make sure I haven't missed anything, and I look pretty good. I've already put a coat of uh, boiled linseed oil and naphtha on the top, and I'm getting ready to put it on the base, and I'm just going to put that on with a paper towel. This is boiled linseed oil and naphtha, like I said, and it's about, oh, I don't know, maybe 35 40% boiled linseed oil and naphtha to uh, thin it out. And I'm just going to start putting a coat of that on the base itself and the legs. I've got the coat of boiled linseed oil on here. I'm just wiping off the excess. Uh, this is where the patience comes in with the finish like this. I've got to let this sit for probably minimum two days. I'm probably going to give it three days before I do anything with it. I've got to give plenty of time for that oil to dry on here. I mentioned before I did thin it down quite a bit with naphtha. That'll help it dry faster so I don't have to give it a week, but uh, I still want to give it three days, maybe four days. I don't know, but uh, I really like how this stayed light. This maple here and this maple here turned a little bit darker. There were different boards. It's a really nice complementary color, especially with this cherry uh, beading on the bottom. So anyways, there you have it. I just got to let it sit. Well, I've given the oil four days to dry, and I'm getting ready to start putting some shellac on. So the first thing I need is get my applicator ready. This is just a piece of t-shirt cloth and some cheesecloth there, and I'm just going to get this wet. I'm going to fold it up inside the t-shirt. Give it a couple twists and then take a rubber band and tie that off. Like that. Now I've got my pad where I can actually start putting the shellac on. And this is pretty easy. I'm just going to start wiping it on. And these are going to be very light coats. So I've got the first coat of shellac on here, and actually it's, it's almost dry after only a couple minutes. But I'm going to give this probably 20 minutes to a half hour to dry, and then I'll put on a second coat. So after the second coat dried, I've just flattened this all out with the 500 grit sanding pad. And what it's doing over here now, I'm going to start shooting shellac on this with the spray gun. I don't know exactly how many coats I'm going to put on. It's really going to depend on how it looks when I get done with it. And uh, anyways, I'm not going to film that because it's a messy business and I don't want to have the camera anywhere near the spray gun when it's going. So I will uh, turn the camera back on after I've gotten this all sprayed down. So I ended up putting four coats of the uh, sprayed shellac on here over the course of about three hours. Then I let it sit for four hours, and now I'm taking some 400 grit sandpaper and just very carefully trying to go with the grain as much as I can. Knock down the surface just a little bit so it's nice and flat. I knocked that back, and yes, I'm going to put on one more coat, and I'm going to pad this on very lightly. Lightly as I can, anyways. To bring back the shine a little bit. This will dry very, very fast. Now that I've got that last coat on there, I'm going to go ahead and let that dry overnight. 
Well, I've given that last coat of shellac a day to dry, and I'm getting ready to put the paste wax on it. And I'm just going to give it a light coat and put this on in a circular motion. Once I have it covered completely, I'll let it dry for about, I don't know, maybe 10 minutes or so, and then I'll buff it out. Well, I've given that about 10 minutes to dry. I'm just going to take a soft cloth here and just wipe it all off, buff it out. I've got that all buffed out, and the sheen is exactly what I'm looking for. It's a medium gloss and uh, just came out really nice. I'm going to finish up the base, and then I'll get the base attached to the top. I'm getting ready to attach the, the base to the table, and I've got a position so it's an even reveal all the way around. I've got my little buttons here. I'm just going to place them in there. I'll take a screw, put it down in there, and then mark where that hole is. Well, that's it. The table's finally complete. I have brought it inside here in our family room. It's sitting between these two chairs. This is where it was meant to go all along. Uh, this table was a lot of fun to build. It was a huge learning experience for me, and I hope you guys learned something too along the way. I'd also like to thank everybody who's uh, shown me a lot of support, both on Instagram and YouTube and Twitter. While I've been making this table, I made some mistakes along the way, and a lot of people jumped in to help me out, and I, I really do appreciate it. I'd like to also thank the people of Fine Woodworking for allowing me to go into their magazine articles and their archives and actually use some of their techniques on this table and post them on YouTube. Again, if you have any questions or comments, please leave them in the comment section below. And thanks so much for watching, and we'll see you next time.